What's up everyone? You're here today because you're interested in liquid cooling for your computer and you're looking at purchasing an all-in-one as opposed to a complex, massive, and expensive custom loop. Today we're going to take a look at the Corsair H100i version 2 all-in-one liquid CPU cooler. This model comes with a copper cold plate that is connected to a 240 millimeter radiator with large diameter, low permeability tubing to help reduce coolant evaporation. The radiator itself is black in color with a silver strip running the entire length of both sides along with the Corsair branding. The kit includes two 120 millimeter SP high static pressure PWM fans and all of the hardware that you will need to connect them to the radiator. The fans are just black and gray plastic and do not include any LED lighting effects. The water block is attractively designed with beveled edges and RGB lighting effects built into the Corsair logo that can be controlled and changed using Corsair's Link software. I will put a link to this software download in the description of this video. The Link software can also be used to control the performance of the cooler itself. The cold plate is made from copper and comes with thermal paste pre-applied, and this is a nice feature for those that are not comfortable applying their own thermal paste material. The cooler looks great, feels solid, and appears to be constructed of high quality materials. But the question is, just how well will this cooler perform? Before we jump into the testing, one important bit of information that I want to mention is I'm going to run the cooler in a push and pull fan configuration. So that's going to be a total of four Corsair SP 120 millimeter high static pressure fans pushing and pulling air through the radiator. I'm going to do this to push the cooler to its absolute limits of cooling performance to show you what it can do. If you're planning to use this cooler just as it is out of the box with the two included Corsair SP fans, that's fine too. This is not going to make a gigantic difference in terms of cooling performance. And if you're concerned about that, I encourage you to search around a little bit on YouTube. There are a lot of really good videos that compare push versus pull versus push and pull, and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. There are some performance advantages, but in general, I, I'm not sure it's really worth it for the money. But like I said, we're gonna push this cooler to its absolute limits, so let's have a look. Exporting 1440p video in Adobe Premiere Pro CC, the H100i version 2 did quite well. It managed to keep our 8700K quite cool under all circumstances, even when overclocked to 5 gigahertz. Comparing that to the performance of the Corsair H105, you can see both coolers perform about the same, with the exception of the stock speeds where the H100i version 2 managed to keep the CPU a little bit cooler. Running the Asus RealBench benchmark, the H100i version 2 kept our 8700K at 58, 70, and 84 degrees Celsius under load at stock 4.8 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz respectively. In Cinebench R15, our 8700K reached a maximum temperature of 55, 69, and 83 degrees Celsius at stock 4.8 and 5 gigahertz. Notice again how close in performance the two coolers are. 1440p gaming is really not a problem for the H100i version 2 or the H105 at stock or overclock settings. Maxing out at 67 Celsius on the H100i version 2 and 69 on the H105, you can clearly see that gaming is really not going to be a problem. Look at those stock numbers though, 48 and 49 Celsius. It shows you just how much overclocking has an effect on temperatures. In fact, I would say if you're not going to be overclocking your processor, you probably don't need to look at these coolers. You can probably save your a bit of money and go with a lower end air or water cooler. The H100i version 2 clearly does not have a problem cooling the latest Coffee Lake Core i7-8700K even when it's overclocked to 5 GHz. So I would recommend this cooler for anyone looking to jump into the Coffee Lake CPU lineup or even if you're looking at something older like a Skylake or even a KB Lake CPU, this is a fantastic CPU cooler and I do not think you'll be disappointed. In terms of acoustical performance, the H100i version 2 did extremely well in my opinion. Even under heavy loads compared to the H105, it was noticeably quieter throughout its operation. If you're currently looking at purchasing the H100i version 2, I can definitely recommend it based on my own personal experience with it. And if you have your choice between the H100i version 2 and the H105, what it really comes down to is whether or not you want the software control provided by the Corsair Link software and whether or not you care about the aesthetics because you get two very different looks. The H105 is a little bit of smaller water block and it has a lot thinner tube tubing, whereas the H100i version 2 has like ultra thick tubing and it's kind of braided. I think it looks quite nice and the water block itself looks a little bit more robust um, and of course you get the RGB lighting effects. 
At the time of recording this video, the Corsair H100i version 2 can be purchased from most online retailers for about 100 to 110 US dollars, which I think positions it quite well within the very competitive landscape of CPU cooling solutions. That's all for today, guys. If you're looking at purchasing this cooler, I hope this video helped you make your decision. As always, give the video a thumbs up if it helped you, and get subscribed for more videos just like this.